like what looks gay? What looks you know gay? what I mean? Like what does yes, I look, look gay, like? right? Like had and like I can obviously tell that you were gay, so you don't look gay. <laughs> you know, it's it's so funny to me because people have this stereotype of what gay people look like. Like we're just all different individuals, and so the way I am, the way I may dress, or the way I look is different from my wife. Like I'm trendy. I wear hoodies a lot, you know, and then I put on heels and and she's corporate. So she's strictly, you know, dressed to the nines every day. And so we get a lot of, oh, you know, oh. We were- What's up, everybody? And welcome to the Queerly Black Show. I'm your host, Ashley, and I'm so happy you came by. The Queerly Black Show aims to normalize the everyday existence of black LGBTQIA plus individuals through an interview style series with regular folks like you and me. So every week, a new guest shares their story and unique perspective on their existence as an LGBTQIA plus individual. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you subscribe, download, set your reminders to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Queerly Black Show. I'm your host, Ashley. I'm here today with a special guest. We got Sharon in the building. She's, you can find her pretty much just Sharon on all platforms. But I'm going to let Sharon introduce herself. Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so let's see. Let's get it started. So I'm a native Nashvilleian. I grew up in, in the South, of course. Um, right now I live, we live in, in Maryland in um, the Potomac area, but Southern, true and true to my bones or whatever. Um, Three kids um, that are mine. And then I have a bonus son from my wife, Justin. We are empty nesters and we are very happy about that. (laughs) We have um, three grandkids. Um, Our oldest son lives in Alaska and they have um, a three and a half year old and then 10 month, it, well, I guess there'll be 11 month old twin boys. So we have a pretty broad blended family, which works for us, you know, just a typical family. Um, a little bit about my background, as I was telling you before we got started, like I don't have probably, I don't know if there's a certain story or whatever, but my coming out story is wasn't like, oh, I was 12 and I came out and I realized, and so no, that just was, that wasn't me. Um, I was actually married, had three kids, had only dated guys, only dated guys, complete transparency here because that's just who I am. Mm -hmm. So of course I cheated on my husband, right? (laughs) I cheated on, I cheated on my husband and I was just, I was in an unhappy marriage and, um, just wasn't work for me, befriended someone at work and we were like, oh, and I was like, yeah, I probably should get a divorce, right? And it was my son's father. And I was like, but I think if you were a guy is what I told her. I said, I think I probably have a crush on you. Mm. And she was like, what? She hung up the phone on me. And I was like, so, um, so I, I had an attraction to her and, and then eventually we both got divorced and kind of dated after that. She just, she wasn't the one, but that was like kind of the gateway to me, you know, said, oh, maybe I could date someone of the same sex. Because for me, it's about the person. And so I kind of dated a little bit, didn't work, got remarried again to a guy. Bad decision, because at that point, I was like, yeah, no, this is not working for me. Mm, You knew what it was. (laughs) I was like, this isn't working for me. But Mm -hmm. honestly, in all transparency, I told him that um, I've dated girls before. I don't know that I won't ever want to date girls again. And so we just went with it. We had my daughter and about a year after being married, I was like, yeah, no, this is not working for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, that's just kind of how I, you know, brought that out. My kids were fair. My kids were pretty young at that time. And I didn't make a declaration to my family or anything like that. I have three sisters and my mom and my grandmother were living at the time. And so I had a girlfriend and she was just always around. And I dated her for like 12 years, right? Got divorced, dated her for like 12 years. Part of the time, honestly, I was still, I was still um, legally married. And um, yeah, so then I moved out, got divorced, moved out with my kids, continued to date her. 
And so my family was like, well, why are you keeping your life a secret? And I'm like, well, I didn't really know it was a secret because I have a partner who's at every function, every holiday, all the things. So I guess I just didn't feel like I needed to say it when yeah. they, when I felt like they knew it. Right. Yeah. And so once I ended that relationship, I was just like, yeah, I'm totally gay. Mm. <laughs> I was like, I'm totally gay. I'm probably never going to date guys again. And my family was totally cool with it. Um, I have one of my sisters. She's probably a tad bit homophobic, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's her shortcoming. Doesn't, doesn't affect my life. She's always been pretty decent to anyone that I've dated. Um, and so, yeah, my kids totally accept it. Um, we have two sons that are, that are gay. One's probably a little bit more bisexual than the other. So we're just a, a blended family and we live our, our, our life out loud and mm -hmm. we, we don't make any apologies for who we are and for who we love. And so that's kind of how my wife and I both are. She was probably always interested in, in women at a young age. And then she was married to, and of course we have my bonus son. Um, but, you know, we just believe in being our authentic selves and, you know, and whoever doesn't like it and whoever doesn't want to be here, then don't be here, you know? Yeah. Um, and she's pretty open out at work. Like she's, she's an executive, like she's a C-suite executive and she's been out in her career for a very long time. So, you know, it's just, it's just who we are. You know? Yeah. And you and your wife uh, now, uh, how long have you guys been together? We have been, um, together almost nine years full-time here in Maryland and we've been married five years a little over five nice. years now awesome. yeah. nice yeah. so no so you didn't so you didn't like no 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 girl crushes once you had the 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 crush at work you didn't it didn't none nothing none of the, you was like no there was no like man I remember why I used to look at that that one girl no you know back in the day it just was literally just her it was just her. I really just fell in love with her. And so one of the things that I'm super attracted to is intelligence. And so she was super smart and that was enough. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really liked her. And then I was like, okay, that's fine. I did that. Maybe that was just something that I needed to do to experience it. So then I was like, okay, do I need like a full-time father for my kids and all that? So then that's how I ended up, mm -hmm. but no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally. I get it. Um, what were some of the things like going like, cause obviously one of the things I definitely want to talk about is like how queer culture has changed over time when you were first dating her versus now even right. Like the, the response from people, the, even your own, you know, internal thoughts, um, mm -hmm. how has it changed over time as you've continued to kind of, you know, more or less settle into saying, you know what, I'm gay. And that's it. Right. And, you know, let's move forward. Right. How have, how have your thoughts and kind of your um, expressions outwardly and then people's responses ch changed and adjusted over, over a period of time? Yeah. So with her, I was, you know, I probably didn't want anyone to know. Right. So we were totally on the dial down low, having an affair, you know, we worked together and I would have never wanted anyone to know because people just, looked at you differently. Like that was in the early nineties. And so people were not accepting. Um, and being raised and born in the South and around religion. Yeah. You know, it's just like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to hell for this. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that's just how I felt. And then I started to have conversations with my minister. He's deceased now. And I was like, well, I just love her. And he was like, that's okay. Like he didn't, he didn't make me feel like what I was doing. He was like, God is love. And then he said, I can only tell you like what thus said the Bible or yeah. whatever. And I was like, okay, but I left that meeting with him feeling totally fine. Right. And so when I went to my first real relationship where I was actually committed, like I was totally okay with holding hands, people would look and like, Oh, are they, are they gay or you know, are they dykes or, you know, all mm -hmm. the things. And I, I just really didn't care about that because I'm like, I'm just going to be who I am. And so fast forward to when I got with my wife, like I put her all on social media, put her all on Facebook and then my Facebook exploded, right? People were in my DMs, like, what did I miss? Were you always gay? 
And I'm like, no, I wasn't always gay, but this is who I choose to love and love is love. And so now full circle, people are like, oh, you and your wife are so beautiful. That's what real love looks like. It's just so much more accepting. And I think just in general over the last 20 years, like people have started to accept our community a whole lot more than they did before. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I just, I'm free. Like I, yeah. I feel like with her and with us and our relationship, it's so beautiful to us that we want to share that. It is nothing to be ashamed of. And even in our sorority, we're both AKAs and it's just super accepting to everyone. It's like, I have so many AKs that follow me. And it's like, you guys are beautiful. Thanks for sharing your love, you know, living your life out loud. And so it's totally different than when I first had my first little fling. Thing, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. Um, you talked about uh, your wife being out at work. Um, and I, I mean, I totally understand that. I'm a, 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 a executive at my job too. And my, my, for me, it's a little different just because I look gay. Like it, you just <laughs> see me and like my hair is under my head. It's like shaved on the sides. I, I dress masculine. So like, you know, it's kind of not a, for me, it's not really a thing. It's just, it is like, you just see me and you kind of know. Mm -hmm. Um, but talk about that for you. Are you out at work? And um, how, was that a transition for you kind of deciding to say like, okay, you know, this is, you know, my, my, my sexuality <laughs> at work. Yeah, well, Cause that I, is a thing. Like for people, it is you a know, thing, yeah. my wife is not, she's out at work now because we have a kid mm -hmm. and we're married, but she hasn't always been because mm -hmm. she's very, she's feminine presenting. She's an attorney. You know, it's mm -hmm. a lot of different, you know, elements to why, you know, she would choose to not necessarily be secretive, but just kind of like, I'm not really going to talk about it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so very straight laced in, in terms mm -hmm. of that. And so now, you know, obviously we have a family, she works for a different firm. Um, you know, and so it's, it's a little different, but I totally understand, you know, that, that, but talk about that for you. Yeah. So fortunately I don't work. My wife has retired me. So mm. that's a blessing. So yes, I don't have that. But when I did work, once I was out of my marriage and was living freely and I had a partner at the time, everyone knew. Like everyone knew, I'm like, this is my girlfriend. If we have a work function, I'm like, this is my girlfriend or whatever. I just, once I made the decision, it was just automatic. Yeah. Like I wasn't running around and neither is she running around saying, oh, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay. But we definitely didn't shy away from the fact that we were in same sex relationships. And um, it was well received, you know, there were some people, you know, I had a team and some of them were like, oh, wow, I didn't know, would never thought, or, you know, some of them like were a little bit distant in the beginning. And I'm like, okay, be distant. Mm -hmm. You got to do your job, yeah, you know, exactly. but once, once people realize that it's just not just about who you date and who you sleep with, once they get past that and just look at you for who you are as a, as a good person, then they're like, oh, they kind of let that go. I had yeah. a friend we were out with yesterday and she told me the other day, I said something about being a lesbian. And she said, you know what? I don't even look at you as being gay. And I was like, because I'm more than who right. I love, you know? Right. So we just kind of high five and went on. So yeah. that was always, and she's open. She um, She's walked in, you know, pride parades, you know, from our other company and we've walked and, you know, our kids have walked with us. And so- yeah. I love it. I love just, it. Just, just totally open. Like this is 2023. Seriously. <laughs> you know, seriously. seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, it is. And it's, but it's, it's crazy that just like, um, I, I find that a lot of people are there. It's their, it's their selves more than it's other people about why they can't be comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we have people that are very, very close to us that, are gay and we know that they're gay they, they know that they're gay but they just will never say it and they'll just never you know in this this today 2023 and it's still it's just, it's a shame because you know your happiness should be the goal you know and mm -hmm. living authentically and whoever you are you know is it, it should be the goal so it's a little heartbreaking sometimes but I'm not in the you know 
um, make you come out ministry. I'm just here to share other people's yeah. stories and, you know, hope yeah. that, you know, one of them will lead you to say, you know what, Hey, this is who I am. And I want to fully accept myself. Um, yeah. so, you know, switch the topics a little bit, but, um, you, <laughs> the comment, you don't look gay. <laughs> like people say that. So my wife doesn't look gay either. So it's like, you know, people will say that to her, uh, like what, what goes through your mind? What up? It's your host, Ashley, and I'm interrupting this podcast to ask, are you following us? Have you downloaded the podcast? Are you subscribed to us on YouTube? If you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on all platforms, Queerly Black. I'm going to let y'all get back to the show. Peace. When people say that. I'm like, what looks gay? What looks you know gay? what I mean? Like, what does I guess gay I look, look gay, like? right? Like, had and, like, I can obviously tell that you were gay, so you don't look gay. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's so funny to me because people have this stereotype of what gay people look like. Like we're just all different individuals. And so the way I am, the way I may dress or the way I look is different from my wife. Like I'm trendy, I wear hoodies a lot, you know, and then I put on heels and and she's corporate, so she's strictly, you know, dressed to the nines every day. And so we get a lot of oh, you know, oh, we were shopping not too long ago and we walked in the store, we weren't holding hands or anything. And this lady, African-American lady, she said, oh, are you guys sisters? (laughs) And I'm like, no, (laughs) I just said no. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, and and Patricia's like, no, we're wives. (laughs) I'm just like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I'm like to myself, and she looks so puzzled because you could tell in her face that we didn't look like we would be a same sex couple. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but why are you even asking? Why are you even asking if you're sisters? You know what I mean? Like there was something about our energy that maybe made her think, well, maybe they're sisters or something or whatever, but she, she had, she was at a loss, you know, for words like, oh, damn, like they're gay, you know, like, uh, you know, (laughs) And then nothing to say after that. <laughs> you know, she had so, nothing to say. And so I walked on. Normally, I'm the one that has something to say. But it was my wife that day. She was like, we're married. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, like, yeah. don't ask me. And then she didn't She didn't say, oh, you know. Like, some people come back, oh, you guys are beautiful. Or that's so nice. Or, you know, whatever. But, yeah. She was at a loss. Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> People are wild, man. It's it's crazy out here. Speaking of shopping, the fashion is crazy. It's on point, man. It, it's on Aww. point. I, I had uh once I found you, I showed my wife. I was like, cause we we you know we 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 understand. We into it too. We we you know, um, <laughs> it slowed down a little bit. You know, we got a little baby, but uh, yeah. I, I was like, look, I was like, man, look, like I was like, she why? Like I'm like I'm showing her your page. I'm showing her all the stuff. Like right? I'm like, look, she got this. She got the Louis Vuitton sneakers. Look, man, like, look, you know, showing her everything. But how did you get into fashion? I've always loved clothes. Like growing up, I had three older sisters and um, and we lived with my mom and my grandmother and all of us. My dad died when I was 10. So it was just a bunch of women in the house. But my mom, who lived almost to be 92, was sharp mm. every day. Like she had us dressed to the nines. And so I just always love clothes I just love clothes I was telling my wife I said I remember babe for Christmas I got 21 outfits and I was like I was so excited I was like I don't have to repeat an outfit the whole month of January you know and she was Mm. like that's insane but I just love clothes and since I don't work now and you know I have my business but so now I'm just like more casual I always like sneakers and so now the sneakers are out of control pretty Mm. much you know because Mm. I'm casual every day because I don't have anywhere that I have to go that I have to be dressed up, you know? Mm-hmm. So since COVID it's changed a little bit, like I don't buy as many heels and stuff like that because we kind of all got used to not going out. Yeah. And so um, I was just packing the day. We're going to Vegas this weekend. And I was like, I got to get my outfits ready. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I, like, I got to get my sneakers. I, I was like, I got to you know, pack today. So then I'll go back through it over the next couple of days to make sure I'm fresh every day because I want to be cute while I travel. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, and you emphasize, 
you know, fashion over 50. Um, why is that important in terms of from a from a demographical standpoint to, to focus on on that? Well, because I think a lot of women and, and probably men too think that once they get a certain age that they still can't look good or they still can't be fly and fresh. And I'm like, you're still living. You're still breathing just because you're 50 years old doesn't mean that you're not supposed to look good or you can't wear Jordans or you can't wear sneakers or you can't be trendy. And so a lot of women, like I get so many DMs every day, like, thank you for showing us that we can still be stylish over 50. Like a lot of them say they kind of lost themselves or their kids say, you can't wear that. Like this one lady texted me yesterday. She's like, my daughter's like, where are you going? Like, who, who's dressing you? Where are you going in those jeans? And she said her daughter really liked them. She's like, oh, my friend Sharon, <laughs> you know? And mm-hmm. so it's just important for us to, to just keep living. Like mm-hmm. it keeps us young. Like if you feel good, you dress well, you feel better about yourself. So I'm cute trying to be cute every day. Yeah. So for someone who is, let's say they're like, you know, I haven't really been, you know, paying attention to my clothes too much. I haven't really been into it, but like, I want to kind of, you know, put myself, put some stuff together. Actually, one of our friends, um, she's, she kind of just went through. And I think most people after COVID, because of like, you were talking about the switch of like COVID, we were all in, I got more essential sweatsuits now (laughs) than I had ever in my entire existence of having like sweatsuits, period. Like I have every brown tan (laughs) variation right but now there's the switch of like okay now we're going out more now we're like you know kind of transitioning back into being in the world Mm -hmm. um where where should they start in terms of like if you're just like I guess more of like a capsule situation Mm -hmm. you're like I want to get a few pieces what are some things that they can get to kind of get started like basic so you need like a good jean like I'm, I'm like a good blue jean a good black jean I'm with cute blazers always like white t-shirts, couple of hoodies, loafers are good. You always need a good pair of loafers, mm-hmm. a trench coat because the weather's transitional and then you can just kind of layer it. Um, a couple of good pair of sneakers, always black sneakers. I'm really weird about wearing white sneakers in the, in the winter time. So for summer, a good clean pair of white sneakers, definitely cargos because cargos you can wear with sneakers and you can wear them with heels, a jean jacket, you know, get you some staple earrings. You just kind of switch up stuff. Like I wear black a lot. I wear black a whole lot. Mm-hmm. But I have like an oversized blazer with a t-shirt. I can wear it with leather leggings. I can wear it with shorts. I can wear it with sneakers. You know, those are just staple items that that we need. Like yesterday we were out. I had on leather leggings, but I had on sneakers and a hood. You know, a hoodie and a hoodie jacket, right? Cute little bag. And I was like, okay, this is cute. But if I wanted to, I could have put on some heels, some boots, you know, so those are just kind of some staple items. In fact, my social media manager and I are going to be doing a master class soon for influencers and just kind of teaching them, like, get some basic things and then you can switch up. You got a blazer, you can wear it with jeans, you can wear it with cargos, you know, just kind of get basic, basic things. Yeah, yeah. Get y'all some basic things. Start with the basics. (laughs) Jeans, cargos, a trench coat. A loafer you cannot be, and you know yeah. it's about to be summertime. Short sleeve t shirts, you know, yeah. lightweight jackets. Yeah. yeah, my favorite. I love the yeah. shorts with the with the long sleeve shirts and the high top sneakers. That's my vibe. <laughs> Sweat <laughs> socks. The essential, my... the essential. I have yeah. all the browns. I have all the tans. My wife is like, "Oh, that's really cute." And then the other day, I went to the dermatologist. My dermatologist was like, "Oh, where'd you get that dress?" And I was like, "It's essentials." I was mm-hmm. like, this is just cute, basic stuff that doesn't mm-hmm. cost a lot. And a lot of my followers, I think they think that everything that I wear is designer, but it's not. Most mm-hmm. of the clothes that I wear are not designer. Now, mm-hmm. my shoes and my bags. And staple that's pieces. Different. Yeah. That's, that's different. But I might have on a $5 shirt from Zara, a $15 pair of cargos, and I may have on some Gucci sneakers, but it's the high and the low balance for me. So I try to tell mm-hmm. them. Don't try to get designer stuff if you can't afford it. Don't step out. Don't go over your budget for that. Like, just get a few good pieces. You know yeah. what I mean? And you can mimic those outfits, yeah. you know. What are some good, like, your top kind of stores for quality stuff, right? Because, you know, obviously you can go online, do your little fashion overs and stuff like that. But, like, for those good kind of, like, quality, but not necessarily super expensive 
clothes, what what are some good places to go? I I like Zara. I just do. I like Zara. I like I like Mango. A lot of people don't know about Mango. I like Zara Mango. I'm still a, a Gap girl. I do a lot of shopping in Bloomingdale's, but I usually wait till a lot of it goes on sale. Yeah. Um, and Nordstrom's. That's my. Those are probably my top go to places. And then there's a store here in DC called Cost C O S. That's probably my favorite store, and the quality is really good. And I'm not sure who owns them. I'm headed there today, uh-huh. but they have like cute t-shirts, cute sweaters, jackets, like they have really good leather goods that is, it's totally reasonable, yeah. but a better quality than maybe yeah. a Zara or an H&M, you mm-hmm. know, and for trendy stuff, I don't pay a lot of money for, like if I'm going to get some cargos, I'll get those anywhere, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. yeah, Um, but good jeans, G-Star, you know, G-Star, places like, like that, G-Star, those yeah. are things that you mm-hmm. can keep and wear forever and the quality is not gonna you know it's not gonna be bad at all yeah care for your clothes well though but yeah i do, <laughs> yeah. I, I do. like i mean today i have on a hoodie this is my hoodie i made it i know my followers gonna be like oh you're not even selling that hoodie but i made it yeah and i just put on some leggings and some sneakers today you know yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I love that i love that um i definitely want to 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 uh ask you about your um your brand but i wanted to mention you said dc and i was like oh yeah i forgot to mention that i went to howard so i was in dc oh, for a couple yeah. years yeah we live in la now but uh i was we we met at howard um so oh, definitely nice. definitely a special place in my heart for sure i love this area like i absolutely yeah. love this area we're coming to um la in june i want to come my wife is coming for something and then i i'm gonna come to culture con i think okay. i think in june yeah i gotta yeah. look into that because i thought i thought about I, I saw that last year and i was like oh this is this is this looks this looks like a place i need to go but I yeah i need to look too. into that yeah. So yeah it's supposed to be really 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 live in la this time yeah good well if it, if it for sure we're gonna have to make that happen then yeah, um, for sure. I'm making my way out into the public this year. I'm like, okay, I done interviewed a bunch of people that got different things that they do. So I'm trying to, you know, go out and, and, and be, be in person since the, the podcast is virtual. Um, okay. Great. So I wanted to ask you, yes, talk about your brand. So I know you have the, the um, different, different things that you sell, but just talk about kind of the products that, you know, go along with your brand and kind of inspiration behind those beautiful black women, of course. Um, <laughs> but talk thank about you. That. Thank you. So prior to COVID, I had an LGBT, LGBTQ, blah, 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 line of clothing of t-shirts where we go to festivals and sell them. And so when COVID hit, that kind of stopped, you know, for us from being outside. So over the last couple of years, I was like, what can I do, you know, to, bring my business online and then once I you know had a following on Instagram I was like let me create something that's geared toward women and so I designed this and um and just thinking about what other things I'm going to design coming up I'm going to do some releases for the spring but it's been super great like they've been really super supportive I mean I'm like kind of overwhelmed with the amount of shirts and stuff I'm selling I'm like oh they love me you know and so My social media manager, she's really good with reels and, and we post and it's just going really, really well. And it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's like fun. It's no stress. My wife threw me out of the house. She's like, I have an office here. She's like, you need to take your manufacturing somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a um, t-shirt shop office in DC. And so that's where I go and do everything. And that's like, it gets me out of the house mm-hmm. and it's fun. And I like graphic stuff so it makes it more meaningful because it's something that I enjoy myself yeah, yeah. So just no working, it's beautiful um, working on that and working on dropping a few um more products for the spring and then working on some bigger things for this fall awesome we be we definitely be looking for that for Thank sure you. um all right now we're gonna play a quick little game before we get out of here a okay. game of this or that okay so we're gonna learn a little bit more about Sharon see what she's got going on let's <laughs> go so, Sports bra or underwire bra? Underwire. Underwire. Laundry or cooking? Cooking. Day at the spa or watching sports all day? Day at the spa. (laughs) Short hair (laughs) or long hair? Short hair. Short hair. Lipstick or lip gloss? Lipstick. Sports car or a big truck? Sports car yeah big wedding or small ceremony big wedding stay up late or sleep in stay up late 
iron or redry it? I know you're going to say iron it. <laughs> iron it. <laughs> pay or have her pay? You're married now, so that's, you know. Have her pay? Yes, yeah, <laughs> still have her pay. <laughs> um, awesome, man. Uh, jewelry or handbag? Handbags. And new shoes or new clothes? New shoes. New shoes. Yes, yes, indeed. New shoes. Obviously, my answer would be the same. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. I'm looking at those right there on the top right. Uh, which one? They're these right here. Yes. Yeah. These are. Uh, these were the pride from. These were the pride release. I've actually never even worn these. These were the pride release. Uh, for Nike, like three years ago. Three, years ago? three or oh, four yeah, years ago. Some. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i try to get i try to get them every year um fire. yeah so you know do, yeah do a little do a little bit um yeah. but yeah i haven't even worn them yet <laughs> i know it's a Just, shame yeah a it, shame. It, it, what a, but the thing is because to me these are like white air force ones but i have so many of them like i my white I, white air force ones you know you just like i got a brand new pair right here but <laughs> my sister got them for me for christmas like I did, did she get, I don't even know if she got me these this year or last year, but there's a brand new pair and I would just wear these instead of those with anything that I would wear a white Air Force One with. So it's like, they'll just sit there and. Yeah, I know. I know. I was like, <laughs> we, we have a whole shoe, shoe problem, both of us going on um, and the amount of sneakers I have right now is pretty bad. So mm -hmm. gonna, I've been purging. So I'm going to keep purging so that I can probably keep buying. So yeah, exactly. That's the get right. Cause so like, so the funny story, they would get out of here. My mom was here for Christmas and she was like, but we went to the store and I was like, she, you know, so we're, we're at the store and I was like, yeah, mom, I'll, I want you to get me these for Christmas. Cause she's like, I don't know what you want for Christmas. Like, let's just mm -hmm. go to the store. Like I, I can't deal with this. So I, I wanted to get these. And she was like, Ashley, she was like, you have three pairs of the same shoe already at the house. I was like, mom, they're not the same. Not the same. <laughs> not the same. <laughs> I was like, mom, don't, not the same. don't, don't, don't do that. They're not the same. <laughs> so we come home and then I showed her, I showed her and I was like, no, mom, yes. like, these are Air Kai's, you know, like these are, these are actually Carmelo Anthony's. I got oh, these in nice. Vegas. I got these oh. in Vegas. You're about to go to Vegas at, um, what's the name of the store? Jesus, I can't remember. It's in um, it's in Caesar Palace. It's oh wow! In Caesar Palace. In, C in Caesar's. In Caesar Palace. Yeah. It's oh man, what is the name of that place? I have to find it for you, and, and yeah, I'll tell you. But uh, know, I went I'm there. Definitely going. I'm definitely yeah, going. Yeah, I got I got those. I got a couple of pairs from that from that store. It's a resale shop, so you know they're a little mm -hmm. more expensive. But yeah. um, but yeah, I'm yeah. Do I do the shoes? It's just bad. It's bad. I know. I put on three <laughs> pair of tennis shoes today, and I was like, well. <laughs> and then I ended up with some kid Nikes on. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. I'm like, yeah, today. yeah, yeah. Yeah, my wife too. She has she has a bunch, and I I I know her sneakers. I'll I always get her sneakers. Um, uh, because when I'm I'm just usually at the store, and I just oh, mm -hmm. yeah, she, and I get mad because I can't fit women's sneakers my feet are too big so i have oh, to wow. like when the cute colorways come out that are mm -hmm. like the orange and the pinks and the, I, I can't get any of those but i'll just get them for her and oh, uh wow. she was like i didn't even know those were, uh, was out i'm like i know that way you know so I sneakers know. yeah it's a bad it's a bad thing yeah but, um, my wife is even wearing jordans i'm like who, right who, <laughs> yeah. who are you and she yeah. was like yeah oh i like these and i'm just like yeah you've come a long way wearing basketball shoes yeah <laughs> donks and all that yeah and my wife she's 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 uh um her job is not super she's not super dressy but um mm -hmm. she's in like when she dresses she dresses more she dress she's gotten into the sneakers more but she 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 likes to store Wiseman boots and uh you know different like little balenciaga boots with mm -hmm. different little stuff like that's mm -hmm. her that's more normally her vibe she likes boots yeah. But um, the sneakers, she's she's gotten into a lot more. So yeah, it's nice. fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun. fun. A lot of the women, when we're talking about women over 50, a lot of them are like, oh, wow. Like this lady said, you had me go out and buy some sneakers. She's yeah. had sneakers in years. And I'm like, yeah, your feet will thank you. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know so yeah seriously good man well thank you so much for coming um give yeah. one piece of advice for somebody who is you know i think um with with you i i, I want to focus more on like you know just being confident in your 50s you know just like living your life just continuing to live um what piece of advice would you have for them yeah just people have to be really true to themselves right and kind of like block out the noise like if you're living in your truth and being who you are and being your authentic self, then don't let the opinions of others 
you know, waver you. Just be who you are and you'll be a whole lot happier because when we try to be anything other than who we are, we're depriving ourselves of so much happiness. So don't do that, guys. Don't do, just yeah. be who you are and whoever wants to come along for the ride and love you and appreciate who you are as a person, then those are the people you're supposed to rock with. Yeah, that's 100%. Yeah. Tell the people where they can find you. They can find me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook at Just Sharon. And it's J-U-S-T-S-H-E-R-R-O-N. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, sweetie. Y'all already know it's another episode of Queerly Black Show. I'm your host, Ashley. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.